Oh, well, he's a cutie pie. I might put him in Potomac. <laughs> okay, yes. Yeah, he can come right on to Potomac. Oh. What's up, y'all? It's your boy Richie Sky. We're back with another video, and today we got some information for y'all. So, I, wait, wait, wait. Pause for that. Listen, if you're new to this channel and you haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. Hit that notification bell button because you don't want to miss a single bit of what we got going for y'all on this channel. We do news, conjecture, you know, speculation, gossip, all of that good stuff, the fun stuff. You know what I'm saying? And today we're going to be talking about Portia Williams and her fiance, or is he, Dennis McKinley. Okay. So, uh, also, if you guys haven't followed me on Instagram and Twitter, please do so. Also, follow my personal channel. I'll have a link to my latest video. It is a travel vlog on my new channel. It's called Richie in Real Life. That will be in the description below and also in the first comment that will be pinned on this video. So, let's get into some news, shall we? Okay, so, now, you guys know that Portia and Dennis are in some sort of weird space from what we can figure online, right? Um, we know everything that there's been going on in the past several months, all the stuff that's been in the news, you guys know all of that good information, right? Okay, good, 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 good. We're all caught up, okay? So what I'm gonna talk to you guys about today is that, yo, this man was nearly arrested over the weekend. Yes. How do we know this? Cause he put it all on his Instagram. Listen, this was obviously either a case of mistaken identity or just wrongful uh, accusations. I don't know what you want to call it, but let's get into exactly what happened and then let's talk about you know the implications and what this means moving forward. So over the weekend, Dennis actually posted this. He said, yesterday, I was accosted by a super aggressive Emory police officer, hashtag Beth Walsh, badge number 215, who racially profiled me and falsely accused me of stealing a $4 sandwich. I had a receipt, which would easily have ended her inquiry. There was a cashier that could have easily verified that I paid for everything I had. There were a number of easy resolutions that could have been that could have de-escalated the unnecessary racial profiling and my detention by this officer. Instead, this Emory police officer chose to abuse her power. She chose aggression over common sense. She put her hands on her weapon. She put her hands on me. She publicly humiliated me, falsely and wrongfully accused me of stealing a sandwich and placed me in handcuffs so tight that she caused injuries to both of my wrists. I was profiled. She was wrong. No apology, just more vitriol. She blamed me for the entire situation. It was disgusting. I could have been the next hashtag because she was that aggressive. I went to see my doctor for a routine doctor visit at Emory Healthcare, Emory Hospital. Stopped to grab a sandwich and this is what happened. It happens to us everywhere, at any time, for any reason. I can't let this go, this is not okay. I've retained counsel at Mike Sterling and Dryer Sterling LLC. Now we can add going to the doctor or buying a sandwich while black to the list of things we cannot do. So, allegedly the police department released a statement regarding the incident and it says that an Emory Police Department officer detained an individual suspected of not paying for an item. Once the officer learned the individual had purchased it, he was released. Hmm. Racial profiling, mistaken identity, mistaken action. What do we have here, guys? Do we have a some type of civil case do we have some type of lawsuit that he you know because it's listen i have a friend that was wrongfully uh, uh, do you call it accosted um what do you call it he was wrongfully accused it was a case of mistaking identity let's say it like that and he was called out into the street as he was leaving his home and he was forced to lie on the pavement while they put their knees in his back and put handcuffs on him, only to find out that he was not the person who was alleged to have done whatever was done. So not once was he given any type of apology, any type of formal action was taken, and he didn't even pursue it because he felt like he wouldn't have, I mean, it would have just taken more out of him than, was, than he actually had in terms of legal fees. So what my question is to you guys, like what what can what can he do in this situation? Now, 
I don't necessarily know if we needed to know exactly who was handling this. Like, I'm not understanding why we needed to know that it was Mike Sterling that's going to be the lawyer that's going to be prosecuting this case. Just like we heard it was Mike Sterling that was going to be, you know, involved in the whole uh, alleged suit with him and Tasha K. I don't really know what the case is or why it was necessary to mention him other than to possibly give him some publicity in case he was utilizing his services for free. I don't really know what the case is, but what I do know is that I do feel bad for him in this situation. And I hope that, you know, it's it's a scary thing because as a black person or a person any person of any person of color at this point, you know, you can this is the sort of thing that can happen to anyone, any one of us at any point in time. And so a lot of times we have to be vigilant and we have to make sure that we put these situations out there in front of the public and let it gain attention. But interestingly enough, I guess a lot of times I assume when these things happen that it's a male police officer that's doing it. It was shocking to me, I don't know why, that it was a female officer that was doing the alleged accosting. So I guess, you know, if she has a weapon, I guess, you know, anybody with a weapon can get the upper hand on you. And I don't know how big he was to, in reference to her, you know what I'm saying? Just in terms of size and her being able to take him down. But, you know, and I guess maybe he had respect for the law in general, so he's not gonna put up much of a fight. You just kind of do what you're told so you don't get hurt. But in this instance, it sounds like he was hurt in general. So let me know what you guys think about this. I mean, you know, are, 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 does he have a case here for more or is it gonna be his word against her word? It looks like there could have been surveillance video of this whole entire situation as it went down. Who really knows? But, uh, you know, prayers go out to uh, Dennis McKinley in this regard. Now, I want to move on because we got to talk about Portia Williams. Remember, guys, I told you that she had been in the Mexico, okay? She had been down to the Mexico with Melissa Gorgo, with Sonia Morgan, or well, Melissa's from Real Housewives in New Jersey, Sonia's from New York. Also, Tamara Judge, who was from Orange County. But what we didn't know was that Dorinda Medley from New York was also there as well. Now, here's what we know. There was a 501 commercial, right? But what we did not know was that it was a whole song. So the reason for the hashtag, and remember I questioned it last time, was, was like, why is, why is she hashtagging the title work done? Did she go down to Mexico to have some work done? No. The song is called Work Done. I'm gonna put a link in the description of this video to the actual song because it's a song and it's a music video. And honestly, while it is heavily auto-tuned and while it, it, it leans heavily towards the pop music realm, it's actually pretty dope. I mean, what it kind of reminds me of is some almost like some pussycat dolls type stuff. And Portia is like doing like the lead singing in this in this song. So it's like her, Melissa and Ramona are doing the singing. And then Tamara appears in the video to kind of quote one of her infamous lines, that's my opinion. And then Dorinda Medley is along for backup in one of like the little dance routines in the middle. I was actually shocked. Like I, I literally happened to see this right before I sat down to film today. And I was like, okay, okay, okay. Now, let me tell y'all something. I'm sure Countess Luann is somewhere um, quivering in her boots right now because this is actually probably a lot better than any of the music that she's ever put out low key. And to be quite honest with you, I could low key see them taking this out on the road, you know, because everybody's doing this thing now where they're interacting with, you know, their fans, they're interacting with, you know, at meet and greets. I want to do a meet and greet, you know what I'm saying? Um, just to kind of connect with y'all on a different level. But having said that, I feel like we might actually be seeing a lot more of this type of stuff going on in the Housewives franchise. I want to put the link down to the video down below so that you guys can actually see it. Then let me know what your thoughts are if you actually, you know, caught up with it. Now, granted, I'm, it's not going to be played out like, you know, some City Girls or Megan Thee Stallion or anything like that. But it might be something fun for Housewives fans to kind of listen to, you know, as you're getting ready for the party or whatever. And it was a very, very smart move on behalf of 501 to get some of the most popular Housewives from each of the franchises. And it makes sense because both Melissa and uh, Portia have had singles out 
Um, Y'all remember Flatline from back in the day from Portia Williams. Um, and Melissa had a single call on display, okay? So this actually, this whole, this, this grouping makes a lot of sense to me. And it kind of was giving me some Charlie's Angels vibes a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So again, let me know what y'all think about both of these stories. You know, let me know what y'all think about this whole Dennis situation. If you've ever been racially profiled, also let me know if you guys would be interested in this song. And if you would download it, let me know. And guess what, guys? Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Hit that notification bell button so you don't miss a single bit of news that we got going on here. Follow my personal channel, Rich and Scott in Real Life. The link will be in the description for my latest video. And follow me on Instagram and Twitter at DJ Richie Scott. And I'll see you guys in the next video.